Okay, so here we start by beginning uh, by grinding down all of our metal, all of our dents that we have. Uh, we have a small grinder in this situation because uh, a bigger grinder wouldn't be suitable for the things that we have. They're not really big dents, and the smaller grinder can uh, reach in those smaller divots within the dents and uh, can get out all that color that we need to get out of the dents. Now uh, we can proceed to hit down our dents and whatnot. And the reason, another reason why we grind off uh, our metal is because the bondo needs a tooth to hang on to the uh, paint or to hang on to the surface so this is our metal finish we don't need to do any body work to that uh, as it is very small and can be covered by primer very very easily so um, without grinding down any of your surfaces bondo will not stick on up cracking off or falling off something this is bondo mud uh, body filler it means all the same thing and uh, this is hardener right here hardener is what makes the bondo hard and depending on the temperature outside it can vary it can take it longer to harden it can take it uh, it can take a while to harden it can take not very long to harden so you want to make sure you need the hardener like I was doing just then uh, we have um, many different colors of hardener red white and blue you want 10% of the hardener of whatever bondo that you have so um, here we are mixing our bondo to our to its uniform color. Uh, red is my personal favorite. Uh, white is just bad to have because of um, the color coding with that. So uh, here we are laying down our bondo. You don't want any bondo on the factory primer as it is not grinded like I was saying earlier. So it will not stick later on in the future. Like I said, that as our metal finish, we don't need to do any body work to that. It is filed down. Uh, we, all we need to do is just sand it, get all those uh, scratch marks out of there, and we'll be good. Uh, so here we are sanding with 80 grit sandpaper. 40 grit was too uh, aggressive for us, so we decided to go with 80 grit paper. And 80 grit works uh, just fine. It takes it off fairly, fairly fast. But us body men can always tell you that bondo is always easier uh, to go on than it is coming off. So here I am doing a little bit of body work while Ryan is eating bondo off of his fingers. And uh, as you see, the bondo is mixed in its uniform color, and now we are ready to spread our mud. Um, the surface has to be scuffed with 80 grit once again uh, for us to lay bondo over it. You can never get it by with one coat of bondo. So here I am sanding uh, some more bondo off. You just can't put one layer of bondo and expect to be okay. Like I said, here's 180 grit sandpaper, or maybe if I didn't say that before. This is 180 grit sandpaper. Uh, we use it to feather in our leftover bondo that we have and get everything the way that we need it to be. This is a scuff pad here and um, what a scuff pad does, it just scuffs the surface. It's not too much like grinding or anything, it's like 400 grit sandpaper but it just doesn't sand. It's more of like a sponge material that can uh, just scuff your surface and give your paint and primer and whatnot a surface to bite to. And you always, this is a very important step, if you don't scuff then uh, your paint's going to end up falling off within I would say not even like a month maybe like a few weeks if you don't scuff at all uh, here's, here's our respirators mine is obviously the one with a J and then Ryan's his goes hard in the paint <laughs> so uh, you always want to wear those you know you don't want any of those chemicals getting in your lungs and causing problems later on in your life so here I am now waxing greasing off my surface here uh, if you don't wax and grease off your surface, then uh, that Kentucky Fried Chicken you had for lunch, uh, it's not going to be very, it's not going to mix very well with the uh, paint or whatever you're putting on. Uh, it can cause fish eyes and other kinds of bad uh, deterrents in the paint. So um, right there, I was just checking off my fender. It's like a sticky, sticky rag that can collect dirt and whatnot. And here is lacquer primer. Lacquer primer is a very cheap uh, product that can be used just for like DIY guys and whatnot. Um, so here we are spraying our fender uh, with a 50% overlap, you know, with a robotic attitude, right to left, right to left, left to right, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. You want to go from side to side. So here are here we are blocking our fender. This will give you the smooth finish. This will sand out any rough spots that you have in the primer, and that will give you that really smooth finish that everybody will enjoy. So now here I am mixing some black base coat. Uh, base coat just means typical, just regular paint, I guess. Uh, it's a urethane paint rather than lacquer. Uh, is was used back in the 50s, way back when, and uh, it, lacquer dries very, very quick. Um, la you can't l use lacquer paint and lacquer. You can't use urethane paint, which this is a urethane paint that I'm mixing right now, 
and you can't use a lacquer on top of that so uh, you don't want your regulator in the red you always want it in the green you can put it in the red a little bit if you really need to break up the material to not get a nasty orange peel when you're spraying so uh, since we mixed it with some UR50 re reducer it's gonna turn out really wet and really nice so here I am like I said robotic attitude right to the left left to right um, 50% overlap. The only paint that you really don't have to paint 50%, which is actually necessary that you need to paint 75% overlap, is a candy paint. A candy paint is a uh, transparent paint commonly seen on lowriders and whatnot. Uh, some Cadillacs have uh, candy paint on them, and uh, it's just like a very transparent thin paint that you can see right through, and it's actually really cool. You put a silver base coat under candy, and then you spray it and uh, it's a very difficult color to spray because there are so many mistakes that can be made by just one swipe of paint um, so like I said robotic attitude um, I just try to cover the best I can here so uh, I decided to throw in a little bit of custom painting here with some flames so this is fine line tape fine line tape is a very thin tape that can bend very very easily uh, in any direction that you pretty much want it to so since this is just a project, you know, I just did two simple flames. Other, if, other than that, if I had uh, more time or if this was actually going on a car, I would actually intertwine my flames, which uh, means make one go on top of one and then the other, and then another flame go on below another. So uh, intertwining flames is actually really cool. Uh, my style of flame is I like to face mine two different ways. Like as you see the tails on my flames here in a minute, you'll see that they. Uh, won't be facing the same direction. A good uh, example is my sweatshirt on my flames there on my sweatshirt uh, There are multiple flames on that hoodie that look like uh, Crab claws or lobster claws. I just don't like them facing the same way. I just don't think it looks good at all So I make sure my tails uh, on my licks on flames are facing two different directions and one's always bigger than the other flames can be fairly easy after you get uh, used to them after a while uh, I started just drawing them on paper, and uh, from there on, I just um, went on to doing it for, to on cars. This is my second flame job that I've ever done. It's a lot of fun, and uh, I definitely encourage anybody to go out and just try it. Maybe even just draw it just for fun. Uh, you gotta push hard here with my left my left hand. I am pushing decently hard down on the surface to get it to stick. Um, and it's just all in the flow. Flames is a lot about flow, so uh, gotta get that flow. <laughs> Anyways, um, so in here now I am masking my flames off with a quarter inch tape. Uh, you wanna do, you wanna mask off your flames 50% of what you did, so uh, it's gonna be half on the blue fine line tape. That uh, thicker blue tape is gonna be halfway on the blue fine line tape. Uh, that gives it a more of a surface to. I get that gives it more. It holds it down a lot better it, rather than just tape the blue tape itself, the fine line tape, and uh, we can just paper over all that. So uh, this is what it would look like once that process is done. Uh, you make sure you want to scuff in between your flames uh, lightly, but make sure you get it all, and you want to make sure all your tape is pushed down after you are done scuffing your flames. If you, like I said, if you don't scuff, your paint's gonna end up chipping off, and it's not gonna be very good. So uh, all that brack or back breaking work that you just did uh, you just basically just threw it down the drain because you didn't really scuff it all that well and once you rip all that tape and paper off the paint's gonna come with it so that's not gonna be very fun it's not gonna be very cool if you know what I'm saying so the next here we have um, UR50 with orange base coat we were gonna originally do a purple and yellow but we didn't have uh, the purple in stock so we weren't gonna mix anymore it's not really worth it for just a project so here I am mixing some uh, orange paint with some UR50 reducer, it's a universal reducer. It can be used in pretty much a lot of things and it just waters it down. So uh, if the paint sounds like oil, it's not gonna, I, it's just not gonna spray right. So that's what the uh, UR50 does, it waters it down to uh, make it suitable and make it sprayable. Uh, so uh, here I am spraying my flames, don't do what I'm doing here and just pounding on the paint uh, layer after layer, uh, you make sure you want to do it very light coats and uh, if you want to do it the right way if this was actually going on a car I would actually do very light coats and taking my time with it rather than just doing it all in one shot that's just not the way to do it so then here are what my flames look like after afterwards here uh, they're nice easy even covered and uh, there's the paint gun you know so 
Now we are pinstriping our flames in red. Uh, I was going to think about doing blue, but I like the two hot colors together, so uh, I, th I thought the orange and the red went very well together. Um, the two hot colors together are two hot colors or maybe one cold and one hot color, which is like a blue. Um, a blue is a hot color, or a blue is a cold color, and a red is a hot color, a yellow is a warm color. It's um, the it's just, I don't know how to describe it, but anyways, uh, we use tape here instead of uh, paint because it's just uh, a quicker alternative than uh, outlining our flames with paint. I recommend House of Color Paint if any of you guys want to try this on your own uh, rather than tape. We have Los Angeles on the phone, and this is what our um, flames look like, as you see on the tails back there. Uh, we need to cut those off with the razor blade. Uh, to me, cities are a very huge inspiration. Everybody has their own inspiration. Cities just happens to be mine. Being from Indianapolis, Indiana, um, cities just can define a lot of character and a lot of things. You know, Detroit is a good example for uh, auto, um, showing that it has always been strong in the automotive stuff, and uh, sometimes that can just be a very good inspiration. Uh, along with the West Coast, uh, can't wait to move out to Sacramento, California to continue all this auto body stuff and uh, custom paint and whatnot. So here we are um, laying down our clear coat, which is like a UV protectant against the sun and whatnot. So uh, like I said, don't wild out like I'm doing now with a paint gun. It's just not the way to go. You, like, you want to have that robotic attitude, go left to right, left to right. But at this point in time, this fender actually had fallen the day before I actually shot this video. So it was scraped from the wheel well all the way through the flames. I was very disappointed. Uh, I was not happy. Uh, I did not. I was just in a very bad mood. But like I'm, like I was saying, um, being from a city can uh, can really define a person in a way uh, it can it's just it can be care it can just show a lot of character that, that's pretty much all I'm, I can say depending on where you're from um, like I said Indianapolis Indiana it was uh, it was a fairly good experience you know uh, I wish I was kind of still back there but you know it is what it is I'm happy now and um, yeah it's been very fun uh, I chose the West Coast to move to and to further my education because it's more of that style out there to do the custom painting and whatnot so I'm very excited to do that so as you see our clear coat is nice and wet here um, I'm very pleased with our results uh, so here we are again I clear coated this car um, and me and Ryan did a very good job on our fender over here for this project and I'm very very pleased uh, my prayers will go with him as he joins the Air Force and uh, we did a very good job and maybe hopefully one day uh, we can base up again and work as a team to uh, knock out a bunch of cars and whatnot um, possibly owning my own body shop one day and Ryan there to help out and a lot of other people from our lab to help out uh, I think that would be a very cool idea to have a lot of the friends in there you know working on cars so I appreciate you guys for watching and uh, thank you guys so much for listening Thank you all my classmates, y'all are the best, and I'm out, see ya.